Well, hello again, everybody, and thanks for joining. This is Bill Van Orsdell from WaveCloud with today's Self-Publishing Wednesday webinar, The Book Video Trailer, Bringing Your Book to Life. It's kind of a dramatic title, isn't it? Um, uh, before we get started, I want to let everybody know that we're recording tonight's event for playback later. Sometime around midnight, you'll probably get an email that says, thanks for attending, uh, in case you'd like to review the, the um, presentation. Um, uh, click on this link and there will be a recorded version of tonight's presentation there for you. You can also share that with friends. We'd love to have you do that um, if you enjoyed it and if you got some value out of it. You are welcome, whether you listen to the re-recording or not, to request the slides from me. I'll be happy to send them to anyone. I've got my email up on the screen. That's bill.vanorsdell at wavecloud.com. And let's just check our assumptions real quick tonight. Um, I... I am assuming that everyone in the audience, maybe perhaps except Lisa, my colleague from WaveCloud, uh, is planning to or has already self-published your book. And that as part of that plan or that execution that you are creating or preparing to launch your book. So this book trailer idea that we're going to talk about is a great launch tool. Um, it typically falls in the launch planning section of a, a self-published author's um, uh, playbook. So um, if you're if you're on, working on launch, this is the way to go. And of course, a quick word from our sponsor. This is not a sales pitch, uh, and it's frankly it's not even a how to do. Although we'll ask Lisa some very direct questions about what tools she uses and and how she does part of what she does for us. But this is more of a what to do and what not to do. Um, yes, WaveCloud is an author services platform. Yes, we do uh, create book trailers for our customers. If you want to. Take a look at them. You can find them on the WaveCloud channel on YouTube. We've got them all up there. Plus, we actually have a whole bunch of these webinars up there, too. Uh, but frankly, our number one goal is helping writers become successful authors. And if uh, sharing this information helps with that, um, but we don't get a single book trailer out of it, that's fine. Um, our goal is really to help authors sort of navigate these waters and, um, and become successful. Uh, I, there are lots of um, uh, lots of surveys out there that say you know your audience typically pays attention to about thirty percent of what you say, twenty five percent in the opening few slides of your presentation, and then maybe five percent as you tell everybody you're about to end the presentation. So in case you have to leave or you need to fall asleep, it's been a long day. I'm going to start with the conclusions, with our key recommendations, the key points of this presentation, and then we'll talk about these in some detail and then we'll review them at the end. So number one, um, I advise all the clients that I work with, all the authors that we work with, the book trailers are an optional advanced marketing promotion. Um, there are a lot of things that, that I recommend authors spend money on before spending money on book trailers. Um, book trailers can be effective, can be useful. It's hard, frankly, to find a lot of case studies out there that say, yeah, I created a, a book trailer and, and my book sales went through the roof. Um, uh, so there are definitely a lot of other marketing things that I recommend to clients they do first. Um, this is more of an advanced element. Before you create your book trailer video, have a distribution plan. You should know where and how you're going to upload it to various sites on the web and what you're going to do with it once it's up there. You should also know that book trailer content is very different for fiction versus nonfiction. And uh, we'll talk about that content in some detail, uh, but, you, but you should know that um, although the tools might be the same, the way you're going to organize the information is going to be different for fi fiction versus nonfiction. Before you even go and hire or find or borrow or cajole a producer or a video editor to create a book trailer video for you, you're going to want to create a detailed brief. In the advertising world, we call this a, a creative brief. And I've got a whole list of questions that I'll give you that you need to have rock-solid, thorough answers to before you uh, spend a dime on production, on shooting any video or editing any video or creating a video. One of the things I tell all the authors I work with is that when you're creating a book trailer video, you want to engage your fans during production. You want, actually want to treat the production of your video and the launch of your video, the, the sneak preview launch and the full launch of your video, as distinct marketing tools in your toolkit. for. And, it, and maybe you don't have a fan base yet. Maybe you just have a target audience. 
you definitely want to use the production of your video because it's going to be a relatively expensive proposition. It could be hundreds, it could be thousands of dollars. We'll talk about budget. But you want to use it to engage fans. And, and I'll talk about how you might be able to do that. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about budgeting. You know, there's always the, how can I do this myself and not pay a dime? And then there's sort of, you know, what's the sort of, how do we do this using stock images, stock footage, stock uh, pictures, stock uh, audio? And then there's sort of that, well, what if I want to, what if, what if money was no object and I wanted a custom book trailer? I want it to look just as good as the trailer did for, I don't know, Batman. Uh, so we'll talk about what those budgets look like. I also want to invite you, as we're moving along tonight, especially when we get Lisa engaged, and we're going to do that soon, uh, if you've got some questions that you'd like to, to uh, derail us with or ask us or we use a term that, that you don't understand or, or didn't like or disagree with, go ahead and put it there in the question box, and I'll be happy to, to at the next, ta next time I take a breath, I'll read the question, who it's from, and I'll try to answer on the spot. And I promise you, if I can't answer it, I'll try to get an answer back uh, later for the group. So why does this matter? Why are we even talking about creating book trailers? And that's funny. Lisa just said, I have no info on the Batman budget. That's okay, Lisa, I do. I've got a pretty good, uh, a pretty good um, <laughs> budgetary a rule of thumb uh, from the video world. Um, I actually created a video for, um, uh, for a training product that I made, and, and so I've got some uh, good experience with creating videos. But why does this matter? Why, why are we even talking about creating a book trailer Video and it, and probably the number one reason is the possibility of starting a sort of a viral hit. So you create a video that's so touching or so wrenching or so humorous or so helpful um, or so real that uh, people share it and they too tell two people and they tell two people and they tell two people and after you do that about ten times you've told a thousand people or I think eleven times you tell a thousand people or two thousand people depending on how many you started with and that that gives you what's called earned media exposure. You earn the right to take people's attention when you create something that's interesting or entertaining or helpful to consume. And if you can take create a viral hit out of your video, um, you've got some strong potential there. And I've only seen a few viral book trailers. It's sort of like, you know, looking for the unicorn. Um, but it is possible to do it. And, and frankly, doing a book trailer, if you do it right, even if it's not a viral hit, it adds to your book's aura of, you know, sort of, this is a professionally produced book. We've talked in some of our other webinars about other techniques to, to make your book look like, hey, this was uh, professionally produced. It's just as good as those books from traditional publishers, and you ought to take a look at it. And that's things like editing, things like doing print-on-demand, having a very sharp-looking Amazon book sales page, a very crisp and well-formatted book description. This is also one of those examples of things that make me look more like a professional author or professional publisher. Now, of course, if you commission a video and it turns out to be poorly executed or you put it up there and people start giving it thumbs down and poor votes, and uh, then take it down. Because the last thing you want is some video out there that's driving traffic away from your book or away from your sales page or turning people off about you as an author or your brand as an author. You know, it's sort of like the old sunk cost argument that we might remember from Economics 101 in high school or college, and that is the idea that um, it doesn't matter what you paid for it. If it's not doing good things for you, take it down. And what's the key objective for a book trailer video? And what's the thing? I mean, I say it can drive traffic. Really, that's the objective. You want a book trailer video to drive traffic and impulse purchasing to your selling page. Your selling page could be on Amazon, it could be on your own author anchor website. The key idea here, the number one goal for your video usually is to drive people to some place where they can buy your book. So example, I, I pulled up a screenshot from one of the videos that we did uh, for uh, an author that's worked with us. Uh, this is a nonfiction book. Amy, Amy Joy wrote this book called Retaliation. And uh, as you can tell in the last few frames of her video, you know, she says it's available now at Amazon.com. For more information, you can go to her Author Anchor website. I think I would even go one step further, and it might have been a few frames further in this in this YouTube video, and I might have one of those um, little overlay images. And you're probably familiar with them if you use YouTube at all. Um, you're familiar with these little overlays. It says click here to buy the book or click here to, to go to my web page. So I might even add an overlay to this one as well. I talked before about how this is really an optional advanced promotion tool. 
Um, and it's a good addition to the launch plan, but I wouldn't spend a dime on a book trailer video until I already had two dozen reviews. So I, I've executed, um, I planned and executed a review strategy to get reviews for my books so I have social proof. Because if the goal of a book trailer is to drive people to my Amazon.com sales page, and my Amazon.com sales page doesn't have the social proof that this is a good book and worth reading, then I've wasted all the money I spent on the book trailer and promoting the book trailer. If I don't have good metadata, if I haven't created, created a, a print-on-demand version of my book or an author anchor website or gotten all my social media handles, I would do all of those things. I would spend money on those basics before doing a book trailer. And, you know, what, as we talked before, trailers are usually launched to drive that impulse purchase traffic. They're very similar to movie trailers. Um, you can also use them as a method of of uh, previewing your coming book. So let's say you're doing a series or you just want to generate some advanced buzz about your book. Unfortunately, Amazon doesn't offer to us as self-published authors yet the ability to set, a, to set up a coming soon sales page for your book. Um, I'm hopeful that they will in the future, but you can always use a book trailer as a coming soon attraction to drive people to your website. And in fact, you know, that might not be a horrible way. Let's say you've got to couple books already up on Amazon. You want to do a book trailer for the next book in the series. You put it up on your Amazon author page, which is where Amazon will accept book trailers. And in the course of that uh, trailer, you send people to your um, uh, to your author anchor website either to pre-order the book or maybe to leave your leave their email address so that you can tell them when the thing is available on Amazon. It's a great way to, to continue to build your permission-based email list. I mentioned before, you know, make sure you have a distribution plan. You, know, you have to ask yourself, okay, so I spent the money uh, and all the time and the effort and poured it into making this fantastic book trailer. Now what do I do with it? Do I just put it on my phone and show it to friends when I'm out to dinner with them? No. You want to put it, as I mentioned before, on your author Amazon page, your Amazon author page. And if you're not fam familiar with Author Central, you need to get familiar with it. Um, you can't. I don't believe you can have an author page until you put a book up on Amazon. But as soon as you have, you need to be up on that author page and filling it out uh, pretty quickly. Of course, you can always put it on your Facebook account. Now, you may put it on your personal Facebook account. You may put it on your professional Facebook account. You may put it on the Facebook account you created for your book series or your main character or your book title. Of course, probably the, the most important place you're going to throw this thing up is on, on your YouTube channel. And if you don't have a channel, that's okay. Uh, you can have, just have an account on YouTube. But one of the reasons you want it up there is because YouTube has some great tools where you can take a little snippet of code. It's very easy to do. You or your webmaster can do it. And you can put that piece of code up on your own personal website or your own blog. And so when people click on it to see your book trailer, they might get a light box that opens up or it just might expand on the page so they can actually see your trailer. And YouTube is essentially acting as a video server for your website. It's a very important place to have your trailer. If you haven't been to Vimeo yet, um, you need to go check out Vimeo.com. Vimeo is where... Typically, you'll find higher-end videos, and I would, I would say to you that if you're going to professionally produce a video trailer, that uh, doing it on uh, uh, is probably going to be of a quality necessary to, uh, the, to, to shine on Vimeo. So you definitely want to put it up on Vimeo. Um, I already talked about some various Facebook accounts. Your Author Anchor website, you absolutely want to have your video on your Author Anchor website. And if you don't have a plug-in for your blog or, or, uh, or the right kind of bandwidth with your hosting agreement for your website, Link it being you, via YouTube is a really smart way to do it. And, you know, there might be other sites. I, I would uh, probably ask Lisa, wh where else would you, do you have any other ideas about where we should put up our video when we have it done? You know, there are a lot of um, sites that, uh, book review sites, that have quite a few videos um, on their site. So I think that's an excellent place. It's, it's a place where I found a couple of books myself. Um, and their trailers. Um, I would say probably for me the most important place where I find trailers is the author web page. Um, and I actually haven't seen a lot of authors take advantage of having a video on um, Amazon, which is unusual, but I, I think that's underutilized a lot. You know, I actually that's a uh, Lisa, that your tip about um, review sites, I hadn't thought about that. But I'd be willing to bet, I don't know this for sure, but I'd be willing to bet that if you approach a blogger as a self-published author and you say, hey, I've got a great book, professionally produced, here's, a, here's an outstanding description of my book, 
Would you like to review it? And oh, by the way, I have a uh, a book trailer video to put up on your um, put up on your website that that might raise the possibility uh, to a higher level of probability that that blogger, that re book reviewer blog site, would take your book for review because I know that video uh, is a major pull for the Google search engine, and of course, bloggers want more traffic. So you know, there's another great reason to have a book trailer is that. Uh, it might bump you up on the review list. I've got a question here from Sharice. Sharice says, hey, what's this author anchor website you speak of? Yes, absolutely, Sharice, just as you said, it is your author website. And so for me, it might be uh, BillVanOrsdell.us, uh, US, or it might be um, LisaDeanWrites.com. Uh, and, and I think that uh, if you don't have a, your own URL that you own with your artist name in it, uh, or you don't have one for your five book series, uh, you need to go out and get it immediately and get a, a website up where you can start engaging with your target audience. Now, of course, just uploading your book trailer onto Amazon or YouTube or Facebook or Vimeo or your author anchor site or any space isn't enough. You actually have to tell your fans where is uh, that the, your video is up and that they should go take a look at it. Of course, you're building your author uh, platform now, so we're talking about Twitter, Facebook, promoted posts, uh, LinkedIn, pay-per-click campaign, you know, you might do a promoted post on Facebook. That's a super advanced technique. You might run a pay-per-click campaign to drive people to your video. But I would say this, you've got to think critically about um, where you spend money to drive traffic. If you're spending money to drive traffic in the form of advertising to your video and then hoping that your video will drive traffic to your book sales page at Amazon, it's worth evaluating the opposite approach, which is, Maybe drive the traffic directly to your Amazon book sales page and hope that they'll click on your author profile and see your video there. And of course, as I mentioned before, one great use of videos is um, as a method, and we'll talk about a little bit later, about how to build your permission-based email list. I tell all the authors I work with, this is probably the single most important thing that you can do when marketing your book, which is to build your the, the email list of, of your fans who said, yeah, I liked your book and I'd like to find out when you get the next one out or what you're working on next. Very, very important. Uh, Jones says that WordPress has a good place for an author anchor site, and there are good instructions on YouTube. Absolutely, Joan. I think WordPress is a good solution. The only thing I would say uh, about WordPress is I love the software. I love the solution. But I'm always a little bit worried about having someone else be in control of my author anchor site. So I might load WordPress on BillVanOrsdell.com, um, but I'd be very wary, for example, of going and getting BillVanOrsdell.blogspot.com because that means Blogspot is in control of what shows up, ultimate control of what shows up on my page if they ever get acquired or want to change their terms of service. service. So just be, just be wary of that when you're building your author anchor website. Thanks, Joan. Okay, content matters. So I talked before about how different it is when you're building a fiction book trailer versus a nonfiction book trailer. So we've talked in some other videos about the, about the absolute critical importance of your book description. Your book description, if it's a, a fictional book description, your, if it's a fictional book, your book description is your long line plus your hook, short and simple. It's probably a paragraph or two long. It's, it's telling me the setting, the tone, the main character, the main conflict, and then it's giving me a question. Will he get the girl? Uh, will she tame the dinosaur? Um, uh, will they save the earth? Um, will they escape from the so on and so on and so forth? So there's a question that has to be answered there at the end of my book description. That's called my hook. But for a nonfiction uh, book, your book description is very different, right? It's benefit promise. And in a book trailer, you're going to repeat that differently two or three times. It's my unique selling proposition. It's my credentials. It's my testimonials. Testimonials, I think, <clears throat> are important for nonfiction book trailers, I'm sometimes ignored by authors, but I think that they're worth taking a look at the you know benefit promise is of course you know lose 40 pounds in 40 days. The unique selling proposition is do it on the soup diet, uh, and the credentials are hey I've uh, been a five star chef in the greatest restaurants in Europe for the past 15 years, and during my tenure I've accumulated the finest 40 soup recipes there are. And if you will eat one of my soup recipes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for every day for 40 days, you'll lose a pound a day. And here's a testimonial from three or four people who've done just that. So, of course, I'm making all that up. I'm not on the soup diet, but the point is I want to help you understand what's a benefit promise, what's a USB, get your credentials in there, and get some testimonials. Now, um, 
I want to ask Lisa, you know, is is creating the nonfiction book trailer easier or harder than creating the fiction book trailer? If everything else is equal, what do you think? The way we do it at, um, at Wave Cloud. I think it's actually easier to create a nonfiction. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't think that at first. I didn't go in with that um, image in my brain. But um, the few that I've, I've worked on, they've, um, there's a broader image um, that they want. They're not so specific. It doesn't require me to find a blonde-haired, brown-eyed, five-year-old girl. Um, right. it, it, it's, it's easier to find, you know, um, a beautiful meadow, and it's easier to find um, a sharp knife than it is to find a specific sword type with bronze fittings, you know? Sure. So I think nonfiction um, tended to be easier for me, at least. At least the ones that I've worked on so far. Um, I guess there's always always something that, that could change my mind about that. But so far, um, the nonfiction has been a bit easier. Fantastic. All right. Um, you know, one of the things that we ask, oh, so Dodie's got a question. Let's see. Uh, so glad Lisa's joining us. Thanks, Dodie. Dodie's one of our colleagues at WaveCloud. Um, so detailed brief. Uh, you know, when we ask our authors to uh, engage with us, or that rather they ask us to engage with them to help them create a book trailer, well, we immediately, uh, and, and unfortunately maybe some people would say, we throw up this uh, requirement and we say, look, we want to help you create a book trailer, but uh, at this price point, and probably for just about every price point that's out there, we're not going to read the book. Um, uh, you're not paying us to read your book. So instead, as the author, you have to explain to us all of the key things we need to know about your book, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, so that we can do a, a great, fast, efficient job of building your book trailer. And so here are some of the things we ask about in the detailed brief. You know, what's the tone of this book trailer? Is it hopeful? Is it scary? Is it anxious? Is it futuristic? You know, are there key elements of the benefit promise or um, of the of the hero's journey? Are there key scenes or key characters uh, that you want to see visualized in this book trailer? Um, what are some other trailers that you like? You know, uh, you know, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't think of trying to publish an ebook without having read one. So you should probably then also say, well, I wouldn't think about commissioning a book video trailer unless I've seen a hundred and there are plenty of book trailers out there to take a look and as you watch those trailers you can say hey this is what I like and what I don't like about each one of these put together half a dozen or a dozen of them and tell us which ones you like and you know I love the soaring music in the background I love the overhead vistas I love the flyover I love the the, the computer generate whatever you you have to decide what it is you like about trailers so you can communicate that to your producer you may want some text inside the trailer that helps tell your story. You know, we talked about the book description, and of course what we're doing with the book trailer is, a, is the mini version of that book description, and some concepts may simply require some text. Um, some, of them, some, some of the authors we work with actually will create a scene-by-scene -scene script. They might give you three or four or five scenes in a row, and they'll say, well, I want this, then cut away to that, then cut away to this, show me a picture of that, have a little text flown in and say this. We have some authors who say, look, I want uh, voiceover. It's either my voice or a professional voiceover artist. Now, now, when you do that, you're starting to bump up the price. We'll talk about that more in budget. But voiceover is very expensive. Um, but there are plenty of sites where you can go out there and you can get um, good voiceover for not too much money. Also, we need to know about, you know, tell us, what does your main character look like? Um, as Lisa was saying, is she blonde-haired, brown-eyed, and five years old? Um, you know, are we going to be doing, would, do you want an author interview? Do you want some testimonial interviews? So again, we're talking about things that might push the price of your trailer up. Um, one of the things you also need to tell us is, what's the main message you're trying to convey? And maybe it's something as simple as, buy my book, or have hope in the world. But there's, there's probably an overarching message that you want us to convey for you, and you have to articulate that. You have to think about that. You have to write it out for us. Of course, we tell all of our authors, um, you need to have your book cover in your trailer. It probably needs to fly in somewhere at the end or fade in somewhere at the end. And the reason you have your book cover is because if you've gone to the trouble of getting someone excited enough to stay with your book trailer for the minute, minute and a half, minute and 15 seconds uh, that they're going to invest out of their life looking at your book trailer, 
you probably want the last 10 or 15 seconds to feature your book cover. And the reason is simple. Because when they go to buy your book, whether it's in a store shelf virtually or in bricks and, bricks and mortar store, and they see your book cover, it's just a reminder to them of the good experience they had watching your book trailer. And then, of course, at the end, last thing on this, but probably the most important one, is your book description. And so you've got to have a very, very strong uh, book description. It's got to tell your story, and it's got to have just enough in it, but not too much. Um, it's probably one of the most important things that you put together when marketing your book because, of course, it goes in your metadata, goes on your book sales page. And then, Lisa, I missed your timing. I think one of these items you thought was very, very important. Which one is the most important? The book cover. The book cover, yes, having the book cover done. The book cover is probably more important than anything else. And what's interesting is um, I think a lot of times authors don't consider it the most important thing. Um, but for me, when I'm watching a trailer, if there is no book cover at the end, I forget about it. I don't pay any attention to it. It doesn't make me want to go and see it. It doesn't make me want to go and find it on Amazon or go to Barnes & Noble. Um, mm -hmm. The book cover is how most people purchase a book. Right. And so if you don't have it at the end of your trailer or your trailer is so long that it, ex it, it comes up you know, two minutes in, and no one's paying attention anymore. Um, yeah, they're gone. It's gone. And so it's so important. Um, I can't stress it enough. <laughs> yeah. As a reader, it's the most important thing. It is how I buy books. I don't, I don't buy books on Amazon unless they have a book cover. Yeah, um, and it's the, sort of the, it's the link between this emotional experience that you evoke in your audience with your book trailer video and their act of purchasing your book without the book cover, without the thing that associates this, frankly, overfull, uh, um, overstuffed Amazon book sales page. You know, it's the the book cover is what links that fantastic emotional experience you had with this. I got to go deal with this one click thing now. So I absolutely absolutely agree with that. Um, the book cover, although I I probably wouldn't have thought about that in those terms um, when you mentioned that, Lisa. Uh, let me ask you another question, Lisa, as long as we've got you going on this one. What's, what's the most challenging part of building a book trailer video? Of all the steps you have to go through, I mean, is it is it finding the footage? Is it going back and forth, creating the comps with the author? Is it finding the right music? What, what, what's, the, what's the part that, you know, makes you, gives you the most headaches? Um, I want to say it's finding the footage, but that's not always the case. Um, it, I think it depends on where the author comes from. If the author comes at this knowing that I'm not going to be able to find um, a man in his 50s with red hair and green eyes um, smoking a cigarette, if they come in with it knowing that that's not what we're looking for or that's not what we're going to find exactly, then the images become easy and what is the hardest is the back and forth um, getting the information in a timely manner especially if there is a time constraint with the book coming out they want it before the book comes out um, mm -hmm. probably the hardest I would say is is the back and forth getting all of that information and, and clearly you know sometimes I don't communicate as well as I would like and so there's a back and forth with well what do you mean about that oh I didn't mean that I, I, I meant we're talking about this this clip, sorry, I, I was ahead of myself, you know, that's being concise and specific, but understanding that this is a suggestion of your book and not a place to tell your entire story. Um, but I would say the back and forth emailing is probably <laughs> the most time consuming at least. Okay, got it. All right, fantastic. Um, all right, let's pop. Let's pop forward. We're we're about halfway through our uh, the time that we have allotted. So the next thing that that uh, you really have to have nailed when you go to do your book cover is who's your target audience. And of course, the easy answer is well, it's the people that I want to have read my book. And and that's not always the case, right? If you're if you're selling a book, if you're <clears throat> creating a book trailer for a children's book, all right, and and these children that that your target children's age is. <clears throat> excuse me, 7 to 10, let's say, for example. Well, they, they probably don't have credit cards. They probably don't have access to the buy button, although, although I'm sure some do. And so now you actually, your target audience for your video is not actually your 
target readers, it's their parents. Um, uh, we've got uh, authors who, who sell institutionally. So they've got a book that they try to sell to counselors, or they sell them to uh, school systems, or they sell them to prison systems, or they've got a book on um, how to be more productive at work, or how to run better meetings, or how to be a better follower. Uh, and they want to sell that book to companies as part of a speaking career. So you're in that case, your book trailer might be pointed less at the readers and more at these these big institutional buyers. That's something to remember. And and as well, we've got uh, people, especially in the nonfiction space, writing success story books and overcoming adversity books and diet books. And you know, some of these these folks want to create a video or should or should want to create a video that might be targeted at the recommenders or the influencers of their actual readers. So I want you to think about that. I know that in, in past webinars we've talked about this concept of who is your audience and I always like to trot out my old left-handed high school tennis players who want to improve their game on grass. Now that is a very narrow niche and with such a well-defined target audience um, you should be able to find the right uh, the most efficient possible marketing venues to get the word out about your book to left-handed high school tennis players who want to improve their game on grass. But for Regency romance readers who like a, pot, a plot twist, that's going to be harder. Um, it's going to be harder to find um, young readers who, who like the Dune series by Frank, by Frank Herbert. Um, those are going to be much wider, uh, more nebulous markets. So the finer you can tune it and communicate that to the, your video producer um, when you're managing this, uh, the better off you're going to be. I also want to talk about how to use the production um, uh, the production uh, uh, tasks when you're creating your video as part of a marketing plan in itself. You know, I would, uh, whether you have fans or not, I think it's perfectly okay to announce the start of the production of your video. You know, let your fans know, let your blog know, hey, these are some of the tough things I'm wrestling with, and uh, we're getting ready to start production on our video. I'm very excited about it. Um, if you've got a series or you've got, this is the second book that you've got out there, um, and you've got a lot of fans, and hopefully you've, you've started to build that permission-based email list, just for fun, you might want to ask if uh, any of your fans have thought about being uh, the voice of one of your characters. Because that character is going to be in your video, in your, in your book trailer video, and they might want to do a recording of some dialogue for your book trailer video. So you know, there's an interesting way there to, to spawn a contest or spawn some excitement around just the fact that you're creating a, a video trailer for an upcoming book. Of course, if we're talking about nonfiction, um, you've got clients, or you've got friends, or you've got family, or you've got people that have used your system or read your book, and they were moved, or they were improved, or they found success, or they overcame adversity. Ask them for their testimonials. And, and you don't necessarily have to ask them, <clears throat> uh, you know, will you be on camera? A lot of people are shy about that. I'm one of those people. Um, but you can certainly ask them if they can give you a quote. You know, hey, I, 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 I took the soup diet. And I didn't lose just 40 pounds. I lost 45 pounds. So I did better than even I was expecting. And I've kept that weight off because I continue to eat one helping of soup every week. You know, whatever the answer is. But the point is, go ahead and ask your client base or, you, or the people who you're targeting for your nonfiction. Maybe you've sent out some review copies. Ask them for their testimonials because you want to share that in your book trailer video. When you get early comps back, and you will, usually as part of the process, Someone will send you, hey, here's a direction, or here's two different directions, or three different directions. Give me some feedback about this. Here's a great way to engage your audience. Say, hey, you know, ignore all the watermarks and ignore all the, the fuzziness and the, and the rough cuts. Take a look at this. Do you think I'm going the right direction? If you saw a finished video with these elements in it, your fan base, would it make you excited for the next book and make you interested in buying the next book? Ask for feedback from your fan base or your target base, either one. And then, okay, you've got the video done. It's, it's in the can. It's ready to go. You're ready to upload it. But wait a minute. You don't want to just upload it to everybody. You want to get out the red rope. And you want to give a little sneak peek distribution to a few people, either as a result of a contest or as part of a contest. Generate some more um, anxiety and interest in your, the release of your full video. And then, of course, uh, once that period's over, go ahead and broadcast it out. Put it everywhere. Tell the world. And when you do it, of course, ask for likes, likes, ask for thumbs ups, ask for things that help you get rated more highly so that your video might get recommended along with others. All right, budgeting. This is always the favorite part. What does this cost, Bill? I mean, we're talking about a book trailer video. Um, what does it take to do it? 
So there's always a do-it-yourself version. And the do-it-yourself version, tell, tell me, uh, Lisa, what's the software that you use when you are editing together all the pieces of video and audio for your um, for the videos? I use uh, Final Cut Pro. It's an Apple product. Is it is that free or does it cost money? Um, it costs money. <laughs> How much? Is it expensive? Um, I believe it's about three hundred dollars for the program. Okay, so and then uh, uh, you buy Final Cut Pro and it does everything for you, or do you need to take some classes or tutorials or you have an MFA in video art production? <laughs> um, I had to take probably anywhere from five to ten hours of classes at um, Apple. Um, mm -hmm. And I still am learning, and I still take classes, and I still go online and Google as many things as possible um, in Final Cut. It is a robust program. Fantastic. And so, you know, I know that when we're, when, when we're doing videos for our clients, that you're going out and you're getting stock footage, right? Yeah. What, give me a sense of who's the best service out there to use for finding stock video, stock images, stock audio, uh, do you have one you like the best, or do you go to different ones? Um, I personally like iStock. Um, it's an easy interface for me to use. It's got a really easy way to search. Um, it allows me to search for everything at once. So if I put in um, fear, I get video, I get uh, illustrations, I get audio, uh, I get photographs. So it allows me to kind of see a, a broad stroke of what, what they offer. Um, there are lots of of stock footage places out there, but I like iStock. It also has never given any any problems as far as viruses, which is something that I'm always concerned with. Mm -hmm. When something is free online, I hesitate because I it is how I work. Um, my laptop is how I make my money, so um, I don't want anything corrupting anything. <laughs> well, and I think and, he, and I think you're referring to iStockPhoto.com. Yes. What did I, I say? You said iStock. Uh, yes, I am. Okay, great. So iStockPhoto.com is where you find photos, illustrations, video, audio, and uh, you're finding, and they have a ton, they have a lot of not just pictures, but they have a lot of video to choose from too, don't they? Yeah. Hours and hours. Yes, they do. And they've done all the vetting for you so that you don't have to worry about copyright problems, right? Because if I just go yeah. grab some video off of somebody's website or some pictures off of somebody's website, I'm probably asking for trouble. Yes, very much yeah. so. Okay, great. So, you know, my guess is that, uh, t tell me how many, when, when you're t putting together the typical video, how many, because I think they charge by the piece, how many pieces of uh, video and audio and still footage do you throw together in a, in a, in a typical video? I usually use uh, one piece of audio. Um, the video I'm working on right now, though, I am using three pieces of audio. Um, about two to three video pieces, not always, but, but mostly two to three. And then stills is, is where I spend the most, um, four to six. Wow, okay. So you have to go out there, you have to get a basket of images, and probably I bet one of the, one of the time-consuming things for you is going out there and searching. Searching for, yes. as you said before, the 50-year-old, red-headed, green-eyed man smoking on a horse in medieval Spain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'm sure. Um, okay, so you know, so there's the do-it-yourself version. You're probably going to spend uh, 100 to 300 bucks uh, at iStockPhoto.com. Then there's sort of the what we what I call the have somebody else do it for you. Use an established video producer. Provide them a complete brief. Stay engaged with them. Um, I know that ours start at 2.99. A little plug for WaveCloud. And I've seen other sites, they want, they'll charge as much as $500 to $1,000 using stock footage. No voiceover, no custom shooting, uh, uh, but using uh, iStock Photo or other places like that. And then, of course, there's also the custom version, right? And that is uh, $1,000, two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. Um, I know that there's a, a rule of thumb, and actually it's, it's probably bigger now. This was 30 years ago when I shot my video. Um, but you could be spending ten thousand dollars per finished minute of video. You know, if you go to a video production house and say, "Hey, I want to shoot. I want you guys to shoot me because I'm the author and I have a really a lot of important stuff to say." And then I've got four friends here who all us wait on the soup diet, and they're going to come and pose 
and uh, you're going to shoot them and interview them as well. And, and so, you know, I would say that it is challenging to do this right, uh, but not impossible. As long as you stay engaged and you've got a good brief, um, you know, if, if you had to sort of give every author out there one piece of advice, Lisa, or two, we have a little time, you know, what would you tell them about this process, about how to do it right and get the result you're really looking for when you engage with a, a professional video producer, video editor? I think the most important thing is to really know what your logline is. Know what that one sentence um, or two sentence hook is for someone. Um, because without that, you'll find yourself going through your book scene by scene and, and then plucking little things. And then when I put it into a visual timeline, it doesn't work. And, and then we go back and we take things out or we add things. and then we add more things and then we take thing, all those things out because, oh, that's right, there's a policeman and he's more important than the chef. And I think really having that good sense of, I can tell you what my book is about in a sentence in regards to a book trailer is probably, it's definitely the easiest way for me to work with someone when someone has that already in mind. Um, yeah, and your, and your book cover. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got to have the book cover. Um, done, and so we can get the image of it and fly it in, and the, and the book description, the hook, the log line, is absolutely key. All right, good. All right, so now we've we've sort of floated our way uh, back to the beginning, if you will. Let's let's sort of recap. Um, book trailers are optional, right? It's not a requirement to have a book trailer to get your book launched. Um, there aren't any, frankly, there aren't any that I'm aware of. Any great uh, case studies or market analysis that says if you have a book cover you're going to sell 20 percent more books if you have a book cover you're going to sell 50 percent more books i don't i'm not aware of anyone out there who has made that claim um, but they can be uh, a powerful piece of marketing promotion um, they're just some other things that i would make sure that are all buttoned up first make sure you know once you have this video where it's going to live where are you going to put it out there i think lisa's suggestion was an excellent one that i hadn't thought about before which was um, uh, to uh, perhaps use it as part of your request when you are asking for reviews with book bloggers. Hey, you know, if you if you review this book, I also happen to have this tasty bit of video uh, that you might want to embed here on the on your site uh, as uh, it makes your site more attractive. Um, so know your distribution plan. Um, know that you're going to have to whether you've got a fiction book or a nonfiction book. It's a it's a really different structure of content. Um, you're still using video as a medium to tell your story, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, but but uh, it's a different set of stuff that you're going to put in there. Nonfiction, of course, is your benefit promise, your unique selling proposition, your credentials, your testimonials. Fiction is your main character, your tone, your setting, your conflict, your hook. Before you actually engage and put down any money or want to start working with someone, make sure you have a detailed brief. You know, as Lisa said, knowing, uh, especially if you're going to work with an outfit where you know, every time you ask for change, say, let's say for the sake of argument, after your first three changes or your first three reviews, everyone thereafter costs an extra X dollars. Well, it's in, in your interest as an author to make sure that you avoid getting to that point, that you've got a very thorough uh, creative brief for your video, sort of like you're the executive producer. Know your audience, know your audience, know your audience. It's sort of like location, location, location of real estate. You absolutely have to know who is this book trailer for. Is it for the actual reader, which is great, because you're really speaking directly to the reader and to their needs, or is it for someone that buys for the reader? Know what the difference there is. And, of course, if you're going to spend this money and spend this time and engage and do this and build this, this book video trailer, you positively want to engage with your fans during the production. You want to, you want to make them a part of... Uh, uh, each of the steps, as many of the steps as you can to get either your fans or your target market uh, excited or engaged so they've got something to talk about. And then, of course, we talked about budgets. You know, yes, you can probably, you can probably get a homemade one done. Um, I know that uh, Microsoft Windows has a, I think, Microsoft Movie Maker or something like that available for free. You can download it for free. It's probably nowhere near as capable as Final Cut. Um, I know I've tried to use it a couple of times. My teenage kids seem to be pretty good at it. But, um, you know, 
you can go out to iStock Photo or CanStock or these other agencies and get um, royalty-free images, music, photos that you can use when you put together your own, or you can hire a professional video producer to do that same thing for you using your brief. Or you can take that same brief down to the local video production firm, and there's plenty of them in the yellow pages, and talk to them about a budget for your book trailer. So now I'm going to open it up to questions. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, Lisa and I would be happy to take them. Um, we finished a little ahead of schedule, which is good, especially for me. I usually talk on too long. But I'm happy if you've got a question, if you want to pop it into the question box, box I'll read it out for everybody, and we'll, uh, we'll do our best to answer it. So it looks like we don't have any questions for this evening, which is great. Hopefully that means Lisa and I did a decent job. And again, I thank you all very much for joining us. We are so happy to have the chance to uh, do whatever we can to help you be a successful self-published author. Wish everybody a good evening. Take care. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks.